Okay, so here's what I got. Uh, this is the definition of derivative of a function, and you can see this is what we talked about in the past. Okay, this is your, um, it's basically the slope of a secant line as it becomes a tangent line due to your delta x going to zero. And we will represent that through symbols called f prime of x. All right, and so here's what I got. It says find the derivative of a function using the limit process, which is what we have up here. And I will represent that with an f prime of x and say that this is the limit as delta x goes to zero for, okay, and then what I need to do is use this expression on the top um, over a delta x to eventually find my limit, okay? And what does that mean? Well, it means your f of x here, which is 3x minus 5, you're going to have this x right here replaced with this new input, which is x plus delta x. Okay, minus 5. And then this subtraction sign appears next. And then behind that, that is going to be the, the, the original function, that 3x minus 5. All right, so you can check your items up here. Again, it's just the original function minus the original function. The only difference is that your x for your first part gets replaced with an x plus delta x. Now, we have to be pretty solid with our algebra in order for this problem to finish out. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simplify the top by first multiplying. All right, and then this subtraction really means plus a negative one. Okay, we're used to that back in early algebra. So it just means move this through as a form of multiplication and we'll get subtract three X plus five. Now, I can tell students that we did this right if the item in the back with their respective terms cancels with items before that. Okay, so if you look, I have an add five. That will go away with the subtract five. And the subtract three X will disappear with a positive three X. All right, so the limit as delta x goes to zero. And let's see, all I have left with on top is a three delta x over a delta x. And that leaves me with a three, okay? These guys go away. In the end, again, you know you did your work right if your delta x on the bottom in some capacity will cancel with something maybe collectively on the top, okay? So what does that mean? Well, if you consider your points of tangency that would exist on this line, it would really coincide with it, but all those slopes are going to be 3, which is what you see here, and that should surprise us. Okay. All right. Now the next one is pretty much the same, except that instead of having uh, a line, we have a power of 2 as the highest power, and what that means is we have some type of parabola. And unlike the line, your points of tangency at respective locations for x are all going to be different depending on the, the respective x value on your curve. All right. So what we want to do is find an expression, okay, or maybe a, a function with respect to x that will tell us the derivative for the original function at any value of x. All right, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy and pretend it's an f. It's basically the same thing and say that g prime of x is equal to the limits as delta x goes to zero. And I've got this monster numerator that I'm going to have. So I'm going to make this line super long with just a tiny denominator. It's always just a delta x. But here's what I'm going to do. Again, like before, I'm going to take this x plus delta x and replace it into this function. So x plus delta x squared minus 2 times x plus delta x plus 1 minus, 
All right, and then I have my f of x, which is really just my g of x. Make sure it's in parentheses. Okay, and then close it at the end. Now, I said that algebra is important here. You gotta be solid with it. And what does that mean? That means for this piece, you're gonna have to multiply. This is really x plus delta x times itself. Um, some people call that foiling, and we will have to do that. This is x squared plus two x delta x plus delta x squared. And then I'm gonna distribute this, what would be a subtract two, okay? So I'm gonna call that negative two x, because uh, it's really that's plus negative two. And that is uh, subtract two delta x plus one. And then minus, basically again, you're gonna change all the signs in here. That's what happens when you have that subtraction with a set of parentheses, that subtract x squared plus two x minus one. Okay, now, I again, know that I did my work right if everything in the back cancels out with something in the front, okay? And I can start it off right here. I can see that subtract x squared will cancel with this x squared. And this 2x will cancel with this 2x. However, it doesn't cancel, which means I've done something wrong, okay? And let's see. What did I do wrong? Oh, I said 2x delta x. Actually, it's this 2x. So positive 2x, and we'll go away with this guy. I did do it right. And the last piece is this subtract one. We'll cancel with this add one. All right, so my delta x is on the bottom. And on the top, I've got a lot of stuff. Okay, I've got 2x delta x. I have a delta x squared. And the last thing I have is a subtract 2 delta x. All right, now I shared before that if you did your math right, I pointed a little arrow down here, I said your delta x should go away on the bottom from something that's on the top, okay? Now what you don't wanna do is this. You don't wanna say, hey, you know what? Here's my delta x on the back, here's another delta x here, and I'm gonna just cancel this guy with this guy, all right? You have more terms that you have to uh, give some consideration with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull out a delta x, okay, with each of these. And that gives me a 2x, uh, that gives me a delta x, and a subtract 2. All right, and so these delta x's will go away. And so that leaves me with 2x plus delta x minus 2. And then I'm gonna answer the limit question, which we practiced all last chapter. What happens when your delta x goes to zero? Well, as this goes to zero, I will finish with 2x minus two, okay? And what that tells you is for my original g of x function, which is a parabola, you can find the slope of the tangent line for any value of x by inputting that value of x into this function, which we will call g prime of x. That went too fast. Sorry, g prime of x. All right. All right. If that's a little confusing, go back, pause it, work backwards. It's a lot of algebra, but that's what you got to do to get the, these kind of right and worked out. Okay. Sometimes people say is, do we always have lines and parabolas and it's like, no, you can have cubics too, but I didn't want to give an example that was that um, large for this uh, for this piece of notes just because uh, it would take more of our space. And um, I know you can cube a binomial, but those could happen, okay? Very rare, but you could get one. All right, 
same type of directions, and here's what it says. It says find the slope of the tangent line to the graph of the given function at the given point. Okay, so notice that I still have this, but this didn't change. Okay, and I'm gonna do that for this respective function. So, here's what I got. I got f prime of x is equal to, and remember, I'm gonna replace my x plus delta x into the x that you see in the function. Okay, minus my f of x, which is just the original function. Okay, all over delta x. All right, so I gotta be careful with my algebra, as I've shared many times. And here's what I got. I got four minus, now in parentheses, I have to multiply this through. This is x plus delta x times itself which some people call FOIL, that's x squared plus 2x delta x plus delta x squared. Close my parentheses, okay? And then I'm just gonna multiply that plus negative one through or move that through four plus x squared. Okay, and again, I forgot something important. This is my limit as delta x goes to zero. The limit as Delta x goes to zero. Students will say, do you have to write that? You do. Okay. All right, so. Let's do more algebra. And so I have four, and I'm going to distract, uh, sorry, distribute the subtraction sign through. So that's a minus x squared minus two x delta x subtract delta x squared minus four plus x squared. All right, now, as I've said before, if we've done our work right, this back piece that I started with should cancel out with items in the front, and you can see that they conveniently do. So, what does that mean? Well, I have left over negative 2x delta x minus delta x squared all over delta x. And if you've done all your math right, you should be able to get that delta x to cancel on the bottom somehow, all right? And I'm gonna factor that out. Here's your delta x and there's a minus 2x, and if I pull out a delta x here, I have another delta x, and these will go away. And I'm down to my last limit statement here. Since these delta x's go away, I'm left with negative 2x minus a delta x, and as this delta x goes to zero, I'm left with negative 2x. Okay. Now, people are like, are we done? And pretty much, all right? The only thing we have left to do is to address the actual slope of the tangent line at 1, 3, okay? And since I only have a negative 2x here, the only value of significance that I have with this coordinate is the x coordinate. So I'm gonna take negative two, and say that is equal to, uh, sorry, multiplied by one will give me a negative two. And that is my F, let me erase this because, it's the final part of my answer and I wanna make sure it looks right. This is my F prime of one. Okay, so I didn't put an X there because it's not about X now, it's about specific values for X. In this case, it is a one, okay? All right, same thing for a G. Like, now the nice thing about this is that my G is actually gonna be a little bit smaller, okay? So instead of having four minus two X, I'm sorry, four minus X squared, I have four minus two X. 
but this will go quick. Okay, this is the limit as delta x goes to zero, and I've got my delta x on my bottom. I always do that part first, even though my screen hates that. It's probably doing that on purpose because they don't want me to do that part first. I should save it for last. And so here's what I got. I got four minus two, and I have first, again, x plus delta x. Okay, minus, and again, I'm gonna plug in uh, now just the g of x. Okay, and then the rest is just doing your algebra. All right, so I have four minus 2x minus two delta x minus four plus two x. All right, and so again, if we did this math right, if we did our algebra right, some things should cancel. You're right, the fours do. The two x's cancel. And we're left with the limits as delta x goes to zero. And you're left with a negative two delta x all over a delta x. And of course, these will go away. And you're left with a negative two. There are no uh, delta x's in your answer. And so you don't have to let any of those go to zero for a limit. All right. All right. Let's move on.